Here's a quick overview of my home lab storage system. And I have a big wire rack with all the stuff. So these uh, top boxes are kind of acquired at Target, I think. And they are labeled with some high-tech tape. Below them are these Acromels boxes, which I really like. And I got the idea from John McMaster after taking a look at some of um, his storage systems. Then you keep going below and I have, you know, more boxes of stuff. And then once you get, the, the lower you get, the more of a mess it is. But um, I have all sorts of stuff in there. Then on the main workbench here, I have more of these and the Good old, if you saw a video of mine like eight years ago, I was demoing these kind of boxes for storage, which are really cool. Uh, but I have mostly miscellaneous components in here. Got some of these as well from back in the day. And these have, you know, little individual components in there. It's so very nice once you set it up, but taking everything out of the reel, it's a pain in the butt. And um, it's great for when you just need that one component, one size, but it's not when you're trying to build something, it's like, oh, I need 15 of these, counting them out, it's, it's not great. I also have the good old trusty binder full of resistors. Again, I've shown this before in some older videos. This is, again, I rarely use this but comes in handy for once in a while now the real fun comes to these boxes and you see i have various labels the ones that are just labeled with what it is are i just throw stuff in there but for actually building components or building projects i've started to do a legitimate inventory so i have you know i've made these dividers myself because the real ones are kind of expensive and I started labeling relabeling I guess and rebagging some of these components and started to use uh, partsbox IO partsbox.io which is a website that's fantastic for doing professional inventory but it works also for home lab you know sometimes I'll leave them the original bags if it's an appropriately sized but most of the time you'll get these gigantic digikey bag with you know three resistors or something which i feel is wasteful so every ba box is like box one box two actually has components in there and you know i have some usd bags so for example a little usb controller here some bluetooth cards anyway i have all sorts of stuff and of course i have a box with bags. <laughs> so most of these are from DigiKey because you'll have, like for example, this big ESD bag and then inside that ESD bag they'll put this bag with components and then that'll come in another bigger bag. I feel bad throwing these out so I've been keeping them, reusing them, but I'm running out of space so if anyone has ideas on how to reuse these DigiKey bags are like this one's for example, it's like such oddly shaped bags. And if I cut up the resistors a bit, like if it's a hundred, I can just store it like this and it takes so much less space than it otherwise would. These are the actual, the real dividers that, that Acromel sells with them, but again, they're not super cheap. A lot of these boxes, I got a surplus store where you can get them online at all sorts of places. Now, my system for relabeling things is involves here I have a nice little barcode scanner and a label printer so what I do is when my hardware comes in comes in a bag like this, this is an older one I'll scan the barcode and I have a script that will scan it look it up in the DigiKey database get the part description itself and so I don't have to type it in because I'm lazy and reprint it with a smaller code, barcode that just has a part number, it doesn't have all the extra DigiKey nonsense. So this is the new new style DigiKey barcode here. So reprint it and put it like that. 
Um, and then, then I can add it to inventory and have a much more organized system. So I'll just do a really quick example now of scanning the barcode, rebagging, adding to inventory, and then putting a project together, basically getting the pick list so I can build a project and do that. So this is a quick example of scanning a barcode, DigiKey barcode. This is a 1D barcode. It gets scanned and then the label gets printed up here. So then I can add it to this new bag. But And just kind of cut these a bit smaller. Okay, so read back this one. Uh, example of Let's see some op amps over here. Let's do scan. This is my box full of bags. So I can have all ESD bags, various sizes or regular bags. Since this is an op amp, I'm going to use ESD bag. Get the label print here. Open this bag. Bags inside of bags inside of bags. Here we have it's the smallest bag I have for this. I do have slightly smaller bags. But they're not electro electrostatic sensitive, so or protecting ESD safe. Okay, so now I have my two rebag parts. I can go over here to parts box IO. So here in parts box, if I want to add a new part, I go to scan. And then for example, I have this op amp. I'm going to scan it over here. And then here I just select, okay, this one, create part. I don't really add the prices, uh, but you can. And then if you can get a quote for your bomb. And then here I can say which box I want it in. So for digital stuff, I have in this box over here. So I'll say box 01 uh, G, box 1 G. Now I'll just add stock and put it in box 1 G. Same with the second part. We can just scan it. ST micro, create part. I've actually used a few of these already, so I'm just going to go with 21. Same box one G, and put it in. And that's that. So I didn't mention this earlier, but these uh, Acromills boxes actually have a grid system on the side. So when you say, for example, when you see box four A, it's going to be this one, and you can say A1, A3, A5, but I only separated them this way just to keep things a little simpler. So box one, C, D, E, F, G, that kind of thing, um, in case that wasn't clear earlier. Okay, so I'm starting KiCad, then generate bill of materials, I use the KiCad Bomb Wizard script, which uh, I'll add uh, 
in the comments. It's on GitHub. Then I go to my terminal window and you can look, it's just a simple CSV file that got generated. Um, I can then reformat it into what Partsbox IO likes. Then we can go back over here, go to projects, import project, upload that new CSV file. And now we have here, uh, let me make it a little smaller, new project. It's a KiCad project. Here you see the quantity of each part, the name of the bomb and the bomb, designators, the footprint. I mean, it's not super useful. And then some comments. Um, here I can call it SBC Power V1.1. Then I can import it. So now if we go to my projects page, you can see here I have it. Um, if I go look at the bomb, for example, now it tells me these are excluded because they're not, do not place. But here now you can see this, each component, designators, quantity, pretty useful. You can export it here, but more interesting, if you go to builds, you say, okay, let's start a build. I wanna build three of these. So now it tells me this connector, I need three of them. I have eight in stock, everything's okay. If I, for example, try to build 50 of them, it's not good enough. I, I need to order some more of these parts, uh, which I find pretty darn useful. Then once I do have this, if I say build it, it's gonna remove all these parts from stock automatically. Uh, I usually take all the parts out first and then just say, okay, I've built it. You can also export a PDF and you get a really nice, you get a nice file with all of the items, locations, so you can go pick them and start building your project. So that's a brief description of my storage system. Part numbers for the label printer, for the barcode scanner, some of the boxes, bags, I'll put in the description down below. And I hope this was useful. If you have any suggestions for other things or if you want me to cover more specific details about any particular part or any other type of videos, again, drop me a comment or, or find me on Twitter. And I hope this was uh, fun. Cheers.